I moved to Canada three years ago. I am happy about my last three years here, but the process to get where I am today was not easy. Looking back, I wish there were some things I knew beforehand to make my life easier and stress-free, and that's what I want to share with you. To get things straight, I spent countless evenings getting ready for the big move. My desire to collect as much information as possible about Canada was fueled by the fact that I was moving alone. I didn't know anyone in Canada. I had limited amount of money and I didn't have a job waiting for me in Canada. I was hoping for the best while getting ready for the worst. And today I would like to share 10 things I wish I knew before moving to Canada as well as ways to get prepared for them, so that you can avoid them and adapt to the new life even faster. Let's dive into it. Making friends in Canada is not that easy, and some cultures struggle more than others. So, I'm from Russia, and Russians are notoriously famous for their poker face. If you're a stranger, and a warm welcome if you're a friend. But Canadians are kind of opposite. Russians are likely like a coconut. They seem tough on the outside, but once you break the outer shell, they're very soft inside. Canadians are like peaches. They're soft and easy going outside, but once you want to get closer, you'll face the hard, impenetrable core inside. That's what I and many immigrants struggle with, forming meaningful connections that are deeper than superficial small talk. Moving to Canada with a family or a loved one is definitely a huge advantage. At least you have each other when you're in the new country without friends. But when you're moving to a new country alone, as an adult with formed views and habits, it's difficult to find like-minded people and be a newbie in an already well-formed community especially if you're naturally shy and introverted. When you move to a new country, there is also a lot of things you need to learn and get done, from learning how to open a bank account to finding a job. All that leaves little time for yourself and looking for friends. Building new relationships with people is very time-consuming. My suggestion here would be stay positive and active. Once you settle down, Try reaching out to newcomer communities in your city. I am sure you're not the only one looking for friends. Do you have hobbies? That would be one of the best ways to find new friends with whom you can share common interests. I, for example, joined a soccer league. We also have dozens of newcomers joining our Facebook community, so make sure to join in and say hi. I've made a video about my experience living in a small Canadian town, and one of the main points there was that public transport in Canada is bad. Little did I know, public transit in big cities sucks too. If you are coming from Europe or Asia, you will feel this huge change. So get ready to get a car, or be prepared to wait for a bus for 30 minutes or more. Sure, you can check schedule, but the schedule is not always followed, especially during bad weather. That happens everywhere, and big cities like Toronto is not an exception. If there is a snowstorm or a heavy rainfall, public transport will pretty much come to a halt. It still surprises me how a Nordic country like Canada is so unprepared for various weather conditions. My tip here would be, depending on where you are moving to, Learn what the public transit system is like there. Where's the nearest bus stop or subway station? What's the schedule like? What apps do locals use? Keep in mind, not all small towns have buses, rather small shuttle buses running with one-hour intervals. Some small towns in Canada don't even have Uber, so make sure to budget for a car or at least a bicycle. And make sure to budget all expenses that having a car will entail like gas prices, car insurance, yearly service, winter tires, and so on. It adds up fast. And if you decide to walk to your work, make sure you dress warm, especially during winter months. I know the struggle. You will want to bring as much stuff with you as possible, because your cash will be tight. 
packing will get stressful as you hopelessly try to prioritize what to bring. Well, no need to stress too much. Many clothes can be bought here in Canada and they are not expensive. Do not bring electronics because voltage and plugs are different here. Plus, it's bloody heavy to transport. Make sure your cell phone works in Canada. You can use this website to check if your cell phone will work in Canada. What's more important is your documents, medications, and other items that are necessary for your lifestyle. If you are moving to Canada during winter season, obviously you should prioritize warm clothes over tank tops and shorts. Keep in mind that before you settle down in Canada, you might spend some time moving between apartments or even cities until you find a job and rent a long-term accommodation. So the less stuff you have, the better. It's a well-known fact that internet and cell phone connection quality and cost is behind Europe and Asia. But you only really feel how outdated Canadian technology is once you're here in Canada. Want fast and cheap internet? It doesn't exist here. 8 gigabytes of data for your phone plan will cost you on average 55 Canadian dollars a month. Don't forget to add federal and provincial tax to all prices you see, and that comes to over $60 in Ontario. Oh, and that's 4G LTE if you haven't noticed. Canada is still slowly upgrading to 5G. How much is unlimited data in your country? Let me know in the comments below. Many apps and various features come to Canada significantly later than Europe and Asia. Here in Canada, you oftentimes need to make a phone call and talk to a person to get things done. In Asia or in Europe, you just take a few clicks online. In Canada, you need to call, wait on the line, select multiple options before you're actually connected to an operator, then spend 10 minutes explaining why you're calling or be forced to leave a message for a callback. In 2023, many organizations still communicate with you via snail mail. If you've changed an address and lost a letter, that's your problem. Thankfully, the situation with technologies got better when everyone moved online due to COVID and it accelerated the progress, but there is still a long way to go. What can you do in this situation? Shop around, compare prices, negotiate. Once you choose a provider, stick to them. Sometimes you get rewarded with exclusive deals for being a loyal customer. But sometimes the best thing would be to actually switch to a new provider because they can offer the first time customer deal. One of the reasons why cell phone plans are so expensive is because Canadian market is dominated by just five internet providers. Due to lack of competition and ability to shop around, these five companies pretty much have free reign and can price fix the cost of internet service in Canada. Same goes to many other industries in Canada. Want cheap flight tickets? WestJet and Air Canada share the stage here, and they dictate the ticket prices. In some cases, it's cheaper if you drive to the US and fly from there because it's just cheaper. Doing groceries? You pretty much have three options – Loblaws, Sobeys and Metro. We've previously made a video comparing grocery prices, go check it out. In short, it's clear who dictates the food quality and prices in Canada. And it's not the consumer. My advice here would be to watch our video to find out how you can save on grocery shopping in Canada. Talking about food, let's talk about quality and get on fat. Canada is a Nordic country, so it purchases much of the fresh produce from warmer countries. To make sure it doesn't rot or go bad in transit, they're always shipped green to Canada. You often have to wait for a few days after buying your fruits and veggies so they become ripe. As for a local product, I don't know what chemical they use to grow local fruit, vegetables and berries, but tomatoes don't smell like tomatoes and cucumbers are tasteless and watery and strawberries are rarely sweet. Apples are tasty, but they definitely use some methods of conservation because those apples can stay in my bowl for weeks and still look like they're on the cover of a magazine. If you miss your home country cuisine and want to cook something at home, depending on where you're from, you will have to go to a special grocery store because some products won't be cheap or easy to find. 
North America in general is built on fast food and corn syrup, and sugar is added everywhere. So unless you're careful with what you eat, many immigrants end up gaining weight after moving. Processed food is cheap and much more accessible than healthy organic food here. Please be careful and look after your diet and your health after moving to Canada. And since we're on this topic, If you're spoiled by good, affordable, and easily available healthcare in your home country, brace yourself. Canadian healthcare system is not perfect. There's difficulty finding a family doctor, humongous waiting lines to various procedures, tests, and surgeries, expensive dental care, and sometimes questionable expertise of some healthcare professionals. I'm lucky. My mom is a doctor, so she guides me, educates me, and she gave me a bunch of medication to bring with me in Canada. For example, this summer I had a case of urinary tract infection. If you've ever had that, you'll probably know how horribly unpleasant it is. And when you have that, you must take antibiotics as soon as possible to ease the pain. It took me more than six hours to get attention from my doctor and for the pharmacy to prepare my antibiotic. Thank God I had some in my home emergency kit, thanks to my mom. Without that, I'd be dying in agony for six hours waiting to get help from Canadian healthcare system. My advice, do your medical checks before you come to Canada and take care after your teeth and stock up on all the medication you need and take care after yourself. Maintain your good physical and mental health. You can also educate yourself on how our bodies work, how they react to viruses and bacteria, what common meds do and how they will help you. All that will help you ask better questions to your doctor, because sadly, in Canada, your health is in your own hands. Be careful not to self-diagnose, though. Just educate yourself so at least you know the difference between ibuprofen, aspirin and paracetamol. One of the first things that unpleasantly surprised me right after coming to Canada was the notion of paying your bank to keep your money. Negative interest is something I've never heard of in my home country, just like the urge to have and use a credit card. Nevertheless, it's the only way to establish a credit history in Canada, and it is essential if you plan to rent a home, buy a house or a car. Canadian banks often add service charges to debit transactions, so they further force you to use credit cards. But be careful when using your credit card, since as a newcomer you will most likely have low introductory credit card limit. It is horribly easy for newcomers to spend beyond their means and fall into debt right after moving to Canada. We've made a video about main mistakes newcomers to Canada make, so make sure to check it out for more details. My main advice here would be to educate yourself on the banking system in Canada, learn how credit cards work, and always pay off your credit card statement on time. When you feel more confident using a credit card, you can see that credit cards actually have many perks. Some allow you to collect air miles to exchange for flights. Some give you a good cashback. My personal recommendation for newcomers would be to look into Neo Financial. You can open an account with them in just five minutes and their credit card policies for newcomers are very friendly. And most importantly, they charge zero fees. This is something that I had heard a lot about from people living in the US. But turns out Canada has all the same problems. If you are moving to a big city, you should learn about its neighborhoods and some areas are cheap for a reason. Some of those areas can be right in downtown. Parks, streets, alleys can be filled with encampments full of homeless people. Each intersection close to a hospital, addiction treatment center, shelter will be surrounded by drug addicts or mentally ill people. It causes mixed emotions. It's very sad, but at the same time it's scary. Especially if you're new to the city and you don't know what to expect from people around you. My suggestion would be to stay away from sketchy areas during the night time and be aware of your surroundings at all times. When looking for a place to rent, 
Do your research or work with a real estate agent who can recommend you a better place according to your budget. Real estate agents are free to use, they make money off landlords, so getting one to help you find a home is very helpful, especially if you're a newcomer. Smaller cities usually don't have this problem to such an extent, so many people prefer to live further from core downtown or move to small towns. What should you do if you are suddenly attacked by a stranger? Well, your first reaction could be to fight back to protect your health and your life. Maybe you can carry a pepper spray to protect yourself. The answer is no. According to Canadian laws, you are only allowed to defend yourselves using a proportionate force to the threat that's being given against you. Sprays, even dog sprays or bear sprays are not allowed to be carried. No electric stun guns and certainly no firearms, we're not in the US. That means if you're attacked, you should call for police, explain them what happened, wait for them to arrive to solve the issue. And while you wait, you can, I don't know, try and make a small talk to your offender, who knows, maybe they'll change their mind. Have you heard about Freedom Convoy in Canada? It's when some people opposed mandatory vaccinations in Canada and went on to protest vaccinations. It was a nasty, long, scandalous story. Some say that protesters were disruptive and should have done something more useful with their lives. And some fiercely supported them as a symbol of the freedom movement. As a result, protesters were forcefully removed and some had their bank accounts frozen. I'm not discussing who's right or wrong, but we beg the question, did Canada give too much freedom to its people to let them protest for so long? Or did it abuse its powers when it forcefully removed protesters from the streets? There are many other weird restrictions and many people don't even know about them. For example, you are not allowed to climb a tree in Oshawa. And that is very upsetting. Anyways, the main advice here is to learn about rules and laws in Canada. You might not think this is important, you might not even have the slightest idea that some restrictions exist, but you can easily get fined if you don't shovel the snow in front of your house, or if you don't moan your lawn, or if you have an open bottle of liquor in your car. If after these 10 things you feel doubtful about moving to Canada, don't! This video is not intended to scare you. I personally love it here. There are many more advantages than disadvantages. In the end of the day, it's up to you to decide where your priorities lie, right? Are newer technologies more important to you than amazing nature and clean air? Did you get scared by the fact that it's difficult to find friends? Don't be scared, every fourth person in Canada is an immigrant. So, hypothetically, every fourth person in Canada had to deal with finding new friends in the new country, and they can help you. So don't be scared, the points we've talked about might sound bad, but only because you should be prepared for the worst while hoping for the best. So thank you for watching, like, subscribe, join our Facebook group, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.